Let's time travel back to 2001. The GameCube was Nintendo's console of choice. The Star Wars prequels were barely a thing. And if you wanted to go on the internet, you could use Windows XP. Point being, 2001 was definitely a time to be alive. Along with everything else going on, there's actually one more cool cultural thing that you might have missed. That's right, Constant Pain. This was an action-adventure animated show set to debut on Nickelodeon. It was conceived by Micah Wright, former writer for the Angry Beavers. The show, whose unfortunate title sounds like what you might write down on a pain chart at the doctor's office, actually had a pretty cool premise. It stars father and daughter duo Amanda and Doc Payne, who are scientists, pilots, and most importantly, crime fighters in a skyscraper-like city that incorporates elements of both art deco design, diesel punk, superheroes, and standard sci-fi. On top of that, Constant Pain features some pretty cool fight sequences and an animation style reminiscent of pulp comics like Flash Gordon or Johnny Quest, and a somewhat anime-inspired look that might remind you of Avatar The Last Airbender, another Nickelodeon show. So for a show this rocking, you might be wondering, Ben, why the hell haven't I heard of this before? And the disturbing answer is that Constant Pain never actually existed. That's right, Nickelodeon animated a single episode, the pilot, before dropping the show entirely which to this day is the single piece of Constant Pain media in existence, and it's only really found on YouTube. I'll be discussing the various reasons why it was dropped and what potential we might have missed out on a bit later. But first, I wanna dig into this episode and tell you why it's probably my favorite one episode wonder in animation history. So let's get into it. The episode starts out simple enough. It has a really cool intro that highlights all of the points that I just mentioned. It has a really cool animation style, Eh, it's just a rip-off of Cowboy Bebop. Aside from that, we're introduced to the protagonist, Amanda Payne. What's interesting is that we quickly get introduced to the notion that it's not all about Amanda. It's clearly a duo dynamic between her and her father, Doc Payne, as protagonists together. It's even reflected in the show's title. It's about the Payne family. I'm sure Amanda would have been the real main focus, since this was a Nickelodeon kids show, but I also think the dynamic between Doc and Amanda would have been a central piece of the story. It would have been a really fresh father-daughter action duo that we rarely get in this genre. You're letting me drive? <laughs> yeah, you wish. Go warm it up. Good enough for me! Plus, they were set up for some kind of a mystery where Amanda's mother, also Doc's wife, died, or at least disappeared at some point in the past. One thing that's interesting is that this episode isn't really about anything in particular. It's not really clear what Doc Payne does. He's a scientist of some sort, but the episode never really explains what he's working on. One thing that he does do is get Amanda to school, because apparently that still exists in diesel punk metropolises. Things are going to normal till this happens. And it turns out that it's the doing of Amanda's uncle, Doc Payne's brother. He's some sort of sky pirate, and he's hijacking a ship for reasons. Come on, heroes! Who else wants a taste of the gut crusher? I guess you didn't learn nothing when we threw your pal over there, huh? Then a kick-ass fight scene ensues where Doc Payne squares off against his brother, Welton. Doc Payne is a skilled fighter, and the villains apparently know who he is. Watch out, it's Doc Payne! Pull that crate! It's up! Get him! Which gives it a superhero-esque vibe. It's clear that Doc Payne was supposed to be some kind of hero for this city. After that's all said and done, this happens. But Doc Payne survives and the episode pretty much ends plot-wise. Despite the simple premise and story, I think that there's a lot of reasons why this show is so promising. I think the character dynamics are what really makes this show stand out. Aside from the wholesome tag team duo of Amanda and Doc, there's a certain appeal to having what was presumably meant to be the main villain be related to the heroes. I know I've drawn comparisons to Avatar before here with this show, but I think this could have been a really cool storyline, similar to the Fire Nation royal family, where the show dived into why Wayland turned into piracy or at least mad scientist antics versus the good scientist heroics of Doc Payne. It also seems like Doc clearly recognizes his brother as an enemy, My brother died a long time ago. While Amanda doesn't quite understand that her uncle's a bad guy quite yet. <laughs> See ya, sunshine! Later, Uncle Weirdo. I think the aesthetics are really cool as well. Obviously, there was a lot of potential with this Jetson-style city, inspired by interwar-era arts and industry design, 
but the action too was pretty solid for a kid's cartoon. There's a good mix of slapstick comedy, superhero, and martial arts fighting styles, along with loose anime aesthetics that again, shows like Avatar adopted just four years after this. Constant Pain isn't the best looking show on a technical level, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it has the timeless appealing look of a Saturday morning cartoon show. I think it really would have appealed to a broad audience. One thing that I'm a bit mixed about is the character designs. I think some characters have alright designs, like Welton, who has a cool design for a main villain, plus this, uh, squirrel suit thing, but others aren't all that great. Welton's cronies all have a somewhat average diesel punk suit, and they all have the exact same character model, which gets kind of boring. But they are supposed to be cartoonish goons, so maybe that was the point. Also, Amanda kind of looks like a really average teen girl. Like, if I close my eyes, I couldn't picture her character from memory. She doesn't have an iconic main character design or outfit, like Aang, Danny Phantom, Kim Possible, or Ben 10, if you can kind of get what I'm saying. Lastly, it's pretty simple, but I do like the ending of the episode with Amanda being dropped off at school. I like this because it shows that Constant Pain would have definitely had all the sci-fi and superhero action we saw before but also looked like episodes would have B-plots revolving around Amanda's life as a teenager, which would have grounded the show in a pretty authentic way. It would have been a cool balance of realistic, comedy-driven teen dramas, along with all the diesel punk appeal that made the action so cool. It would have been a refreshing take on a fantasy setting, one we didn't get with shows like Avatar, because that goes full fantasy. It's unclear whether Constant Pain would have been episodic or serialized, too and I could honestly kind of see it going either way. However, for the reasons that I mentioned before, I think Constant Pain's pilot set up enough intriguing storyline questions to beg for more. Unfortunately, these are all questions that will forever remain unanswered. That's because Constant Pain never had a chance to even air. As show creator Micah Wright put it, Nickelodeon has made it very clear to me that they did not pick up the show because they were unhappy with my attempts to unionize their studio. There's little other evidence on the internet to support this claim, but knowing how the animation industry goes, I'm inclined to believe that Wright was justified in standing up for himself and saying that. The dynamics and specifics of the relationship between cartoon creators and television executives are a lot too complicated for me to really dive into fairly here. So I'll just say that regardless of what might have happened behind closed doors, it's a shame that a show as promising and inventive as Constant Pain had to be axed because of cynical corporate dispute. But there's other reasons too. 2001 was also the year where the 9-11 terror attack occurred. Due to this, Nickelodeon was alarmed with Constant Pain's recurring premise of hijacking aircrafts and causing other somewhat violent aerial hijinks. They also didn't like how the main character's mother was absent because of a tragedy and thought that all of these elements combined would be too upsetting for a nation still reeling from the most devastating domestic terrorism incident in the nation's history. If you're asking for my personal stance on this, I think that's pretty dumb. I've never been one to believe that kids should be coddled with the content of the media that they consume, or that cartoons should shy away from dealing with real-world issues. Yeah, releasing a show with jokes about destroying buildings with planes would have perhaps been in poor taste in late 2001, but I also think that was not a good reason for Constant Pain to never get the chance to exist at all. I guess we'll never know, since Micah Wright seems to have moved on with his career, and this style of animation and show premise seems to have fallen out of favor with Nickelodeon's modern programming block. Regardless of the true reasons why Constant Pain never happened, I think it was worth taking the time today to analyze and discuss why I think it would have been so good if it were to have existed. It's not the greatest missed potential in media history, or even television history, but I do think it had an intriguing concept and potential for a lot of world building. It could have been Avatar before Avatar, as crazy as that sounds. And to me, it's forever gonna stand as a weird footnote in the rich history of Nickelodeon. So what did you think of Constant Pain? Let me know in the comments below. I have a lot of other pop culture content planned in the coming weeks, including television retrospectives, Nintendo videos, and much more. Next week, I'll be diving into the Pacific Rim franchise, and then after that, I have a few videos about Pokemon and other Nintendo topics. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.